do not block the tight end. In Madden 23, blocking the tight end is just a quick way to get sacked. For the cheapest, fastest, most reliable butt coins in the market, check out my coin sponsors at AOEAH.com and use discount code MONEY for 3% off. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. This is Mad Money Shot. Sniff of the Mad Cheese, as always. Got another tip video for you guys today. Today, I'll be going over the biggest changes from Madden 22 to Madden 23 when it comes to gameplay. In today's video, I'm going to go over some tips and tricks and cheats that you can use to be a better Madden 23 player the day that the game drops. As always, if you guys want to see more videos like this, hit the like button and let me know in the comment section. Make sure to be a subscriber so you guys can stay up to date on all the latest Madden trends. Other than that, let's get right into the video. My first couple tips are all going to be about pass protection. In Madden 23, the pass rush is absolutely insane and the blocking is not very good. You're going to see on this first play here, I'm essentially only sending three guys and my opponent has six guys blocking, which essentially equates to a double team for every rushing lineman, including the running back here who steps up to try to take away the defensive tackle. Blocking running backs are not very good. You'll notice on the very next frame, he just gets right off that and gets the sack instantly. So my number one tip is going to be spend a lot of time learning how to use pass protection. Protection. But to be honest, even this pass protection adjustments don't really do anything. The double team is probably the most effective. I would say double teaming superstar defenders like Aaron Donald, JJ Watt, anytime you have somebody like that on the line, you want to double team them. But everything else here really doesn't work. I think the most effective thing to do is take your check downs. Essentially, always have a check down, a drag or a flat route, something underneath you you can throw to. That's not to say that you can't throw deep in this game, but at the end of the day, every pass is going to have to be a quick throw because the pass blocking just doesn't hold up. You'll see on this deep pass here that my receivers are really about 15 to 20 yards down the field by the time I have to lob the ball up. I mean, it turns out to be about a 50 yard play, but that's more a result of the pass being in the air so long rather than the blocking or how long the route was being run. My next tip has to do with blocking as well, and essentially it is do not block the tight end. In Madden 23, blocking the tight end is just a quick way to get sacked. If your opponent is getting a heavy pass rush, it may be your natural instinct to try to add extra blockers like a running back or a tight end. In Madden 23 though, whenever you block a tight end, the game's programming will essentially turn him into a one-on-one -on -one block with whoever the edge rusher is in front of him, whether it's an outside linebacker or a defensive end. He will become responsible and he will have to block that player by himself. And typically tight ends are much worse pass blockers than right tackles. I even tried doing things like sliding my protection, double teaming the defensive end. The right tackle will try to help out with this adjustment, but at the end of the day, it won't matter because the tight end is still so bad, he just gets around both of them. So now I have two guys blocking nobody. Oh, the best adjustment to make at the end of the day is no adjustment at all. Just let your tight end run the route so that the right tackle can handle the outside responsibility because he will offer much better pass protection. I tried to look into it a little bit to try to figure out why my tight end was doing so horrible in pass pro. I thought maybe it was just because the Saints have a very bad blocking tight end, but at the end of the day, they have a 60 overall blocking tight end that I was using. The rating at the bottom there you can see is an 89 overall tackle. That's Ryan Ramchek's pass rating, which is obviously much higher. So then I thought maybe I just have to have a team with a better blocking tight end. But then when I went through the entire league roster, you can see the highest rated blocking tight end in the entire game is only a 66 overall. So this is something that everybody's going to have a problem with. I even went as far as to put Ryan Ramchak at tight end just to make sure it wasn't the tight end blocking being nerfed. And he blocked from the tight end position the same way he does from the right tackle position. So at the end of the day, it's just because the threshold for tight ends blocking is not high enough to handle these edge defenders. And that won't change until Madden changes the settings that they have in the game. Blocking running backs doesn't really do much either. A lot of times they won't pick the right defender to block, and even when they do, they really don't do much. They might just chip off or, you know, just stop them for a split second before they just run right around them. Which brings me to my next defensive tip. If you're playing defense and you know that these additional blockers are so horrible, it only makes sense to send six defenders every single time. A sixth defender will always get an advantage over a blocking tight end or a running back, so there's no real reason not to send six defenders since we know they're so bad. So you're probably wondering, how do I get better pass blocking since none of these things work? One thing that I noticed in Madden 23 is that the play action does a pretty good job of quelling the pass rush. It doesn't quell the pass rush completely, but it will buy you about a second more worth of time than blocking the running back, which ultimately doesn't work at all. To figure this out, I did an experiment where I went to a game and essentially would just call a play action play and then wait to be sacked. Now you can see here, this play starts at 319 on the time clock and I just basically waited until I got sacked to see how much time we run off the clock. 
my first contact was about 315 and then when the play actually ended blown dead it was 314 so it was somewhere between four and a half to five seconds before i actually got sacked then i did a second drive where i would block the running back every single time and run the play the exact same way and the results were pretty obvious you can see here there's one minute exactly left on the play clock when i hiked the ball then once again waiting back to get sacked and you can see the first time you get contacted three seconds have gone by now i know the depth drop is different because of the play action but you could see how much quicker you get sacked because of that as well and then when the play finally ended it was four seconds off the clock I did this test multiple times and the results were very consistent. I think the reason for this is simple. The play action plays into the play recognition of all the defensive players. While the quarterback is going through the play action motion, the defensive linemen do not attack until they see who has the ball. So once they see that the quarterback has the ball, then they trigger their pass rush moves and their attempts to get after the quarterback. But up until that point, they're waiting to see who has the ball. So that will buy you some extra time. If your opponent guesses pass, however, that will change because guessing pass basically bypasses that entire procedure and sends your lineman directly after the quarterback. My last tip for pass protection is try to stay inside the box. In Madden 23, since people were rolling out and running all over the field in the last game with a skate artist, the offensive line is designed to block for you inside the tackle box. Anytime you leave the tackle box, you will notice whether you have a QB contain on or not, the defensive end will just break right off and be chasing your quarterback down. That's a design function that they put into this game because they really want to keep people inside the box. They realize that people get annoyed by playing people that just run around and throw the ball over the field with Josh Allen or with uh, Lamar Jackson or with Kyler Murray. They realize it's a very frustrating way to play against an opponent and they really try to nerf that. So anytime you leave the box, expect a defender to be on top of you right away. Switching over to the defensive side, if you're not a very good user in Madden 22, then you should be very excited about the next upgrade that I'm going to talk about. Because in Madden 23, when usering in a zone, the zone coverage will be active and alive to the point where it's essentially suggesting to you where you should be covering. In years past, it was really up to you to figure it out. Now you have something that's really suggesting where you should be going, who's the closest receiver to your area, and things of that nature make it much easier to be a user defender in Madden 23. This feature is not without its downsides though, as for whatever reason, you could see this from the offensive side of the ball. So if your opponent is in something like this where there's a curl flat on the field, you have a pretty good idea it's going to be a cover three or cover four because there aren't curl flats in any other zones in the game. So things like this can really give away the play. If you don't see anything at all, you know your opponent's in man coverage. So that's a really big tell and it's something that I don't think EA knows is in the game and probably will get patched over time. But at the end of the day, seeing where your opponent is is and being way out of position like he is here in this cover three zone is going to be very helpful on the offensive side of the ball which brings me to my next tip the importance of putting your user on a blitz if your opponent can see what you're doing what zone coverage you're supposed to be in on the offensive side of the ball it's best to probably hide that with the blitzing animation anytime you put yourself in a blitz that won't show up your opponent won't have that tell and it'll be a lot harder for them to decipher what defense you're in without actually being able to read a defense like normal Next up, we're going to talk about tackling. In Madden 23, there's a new break tackle animation where essentially when an offensive player has the ball, every once in a while, you'll get a quick time event that'll pop up where you have to mash a button to essentially break a tackle or complete the tackle on the defensive side. The problem with this is, though, is that it's always the A button. So if you get in the habit of mashing the A button every time you make a tackle, you're going to always win that tackle in an instant fashion. My next tip is also about tackling, and it's the dive tackle. The dive tackle is back in a big way. I talked about the dive tackle last year as far as being a very good tackling mechanic and a way of really closing the gap on offensive players very quickly, but it's even better this year. As the targeting system just seems to be a lot more accurate, you'll see now that dive tackles are taking down players all over the field, from the front, from behind. It's a very good mechanic in this year's game. And last but not least, we're going to go over how to celebrate because they did change this in Madden 23. In Madden 23, it's a lot harder. You have to hold both the triggers or the L1, L2 and the X button on PlayStation or the A button on Xbox to trigger a celebration animation. As you can see, I tried to figure that out mid-gameplay and it ended up being a fumble. Yeah. So that's it, that's the video. If you guys want to see more videos like this, as always, hit the like button and let me know in the comments section. And make sure to be a subscriber so you can stay up to date on all the latest videos I drop. Other than that, thanks for watching, man. My shit out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my bids and more. Link in the description below.